that start to the season was absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, absolutely. just those two tens that went down. I think uh, the real story for me was the women. The women were just absolutely incredible. And uh, this whole year, actually, the start to the year. So, yeah, it's been a cracker of a beginning of the year. This is his first wave of the matchup. Came in at a 4-1-7. Yeah, smaller wave here, but I, I kind of like this... Uh, approach because in the last heat we saw, saw the other two guys, you know, Kanoa and Kate. Kate kind of just waiting around for a wave to happen and that set kind of didn't eventuate. So I think smart decision by Baron to kind of get the ball rolling. It's been kind of an interesting thing with Baron. I was talking to uh, Britt during sunset and, you know, Baron actually was surfing the same board that he was riding at Pipe uh, at sunset as we see Baron up and riding again. Setting up the wrapping turn to kick things off. Nice pace on the roundhouse from Amia. And now just setting up this inside side track, his second wave so far in the matchup. Nice tight arcing turn again for the Hawaiian, and he will end up kicking his way out of there on the end section. You know, he's going to have a couple of smaller scores on the board, which are most likely going to be a backup. Now he can just sit and wait and sort of be a little bit more selective and get one of those bigger set waves here. It was sort of a slower wave. You can see that he's kind of just beautiful rail transitions here. But as he moves through to the inside, there's a lot of tech, there's a lot of uh, foam, like that whitewash on the face of this wave here. That turn there was really beautifully done. But you can kind of see here he just bobbled a bit and then sort of lost interest. And I think obviously the surf is going to be in tune with that today, really locking into that rhythm of the ocean. Now he's trying to stretch this one out quickly. Miguel Pupo has a big wall really bowling up. And there's that famous backhand float for Pupo where he could almost get inverted and get speed throughout that lip line float. Now big hack there. Well-timed finishing move for the veteran. More lump and bump in it. As we look at this section here, you can see really lining this up here. Goes up to hit it really floats, comes down, and that was a really, really tricky section to read. And then straight up into a foam climb, also another really hard manoeuvre to do. I think it's severely underrated in my books. And then finishes so strong on the inside there. Just for me, the word that comes to mind is commitment. I mean, that, that was just so committed. I loved it. And oh, for best wave of the heat so far, I mean, that right there, does it get any more critical coming down there? Look, so much air underneath the board, regains control, and then goes straight up into a foam climb. I mean, that <laughs> was really well done. I loved that maneuver from Miguel Pupo, then into the climb. I know, that combo right there, just so beautifully surfed, and then comes through to the inside here. Timing is perfect. He eyes up this inside section and releases the fins there. You can see that his hand almost touches the front of his board there, really to just accentuate that release of the fins. Wow, that's going to be a great score. Your first time surfing the Bells Bowl in your first heat and you've taken it out. Talk us through your morning. You're not working with the coach here. How, how are you taking on the Bells Bowl this morning? Well, I got here this morning. I mean, everyone was, you know, every, we knew it was going to be really good. And um, I could just see some big lines even in the dark. And, uh, and yeah, it's pumping, but it's way harder than it looks. It's kind of like, you know, full of water and a little bit fat. As we look here, we've got some live action. We've got a goofy up and riding again. Nice setup here for Miguel Pupo. Fresh off the 6 6 7. Off the bottom, squaring up, attacking it this time. Now he's got a race to set up another big whip. Knew he had to get there quickly before it got really full, but he stumbles right after that last maneuver. As we have a look at this, those takeoffs like that, they're hard to do. You made that look really easy, but they're really hard, those whitewash takeoffs. Carving maneuver there, but straight up into that sec second section. You can see he just cut that maneuver a little bit short because he could see that it was running off into the bowl and beautifully timed third section. But yeah, it's going to be unfortunate that he's going to be a bit annoyed about that. David Silva now with priority. He's looking for the roll in with the whitewater. Section landing on his heels, but he's got... Uh, he'll just get clipped. Short ride there and throws away priority when he doesn't have anything on the board yet. He's very fast in transition. Just needs the right type of wave to show it. Here he goes again with third priority. First blast, snap to slide. Fit that in very quickly. And now just busy work on the open face. 
Now a nice entry, mid-face bottom turn and slaps it shut. So great job having third priority after the error falling on his wave that he used first priority on. In that same situation as Cade, looking for a set wave. So this was just really, really smart surfing. You know, a couple of errors straight up into the lip there on that first turn. Really well timed. Wave gets a little bit sleepy here. It's obviously a smaller wave because he was on his way back out. But he eyes up this end section and the timing here for the finish was impeccable. Releases the fins there on that last turn. So I personally, myself as well, I think back to Margaret River when I was a Grommy and I got to carry Melanie Redman Carr's board and Heather Clark's board. And it was like a highlight of my young life. I, one of the best days of my life. Got to get an autograph from Lane Beachley. Like these events mean so much to the Grommies. Oh, it's huge. As we see a huge committed hammer from Baron Mamiya fell out of the sky, controlled it, and then the lip just took him down. So we'll see where the judges land with him having control on an aggressive finish. It definitely could uh, argue for his best number. 5.94 for the lead here, Flick. Yeah, a bit of a frothy takeoff here, but he was on the money. I mean, this wave was just definitely going to stand up here. Knew what he saw down the line, laid into a couple of big sections. And was that a ride out or was that a not a ride out? I don't know. That's going to be definitely touch and go. He also fell on that last one as well. So borderline it almost didn't look committed enough and then right there just getting clipped Doink. i mean it's the dream tour it's the championship <laughs> tour i don't feel like they're going to give it to him <gasps> oh unfortunate for baron because uh that was a hammer of a move right there just really dropped that wallet and kind of looked like it was home and hose and he was definitely going to ride out of this but you could just see there was that tiny little bit of whitewash just exploding from the right there hits the side of his board and Ah. Taken out by that invisible ninja. Incomplete. And on that record, if he could win this event, he'll get a fifth bell. 3.44 to go. We've got David Silva throwing the wrapping cut back. Needs a 4.34 to avoid the elimination round. Nice glassy open face. Quickly oh. a bit of a two for one as he goes under the lip to finish. And I was like, hey, he's looking for a 4.34 here. You know, as we review this one right now, We'll just get to see the start of this here. It's a bit of a sleepier start. And I was wondering, oh, what's he seeing down the line here? But kind of knew what he was doing and just got all this speed. Went straight up into that one. Just, he didn't even, he cut that bottom turn short. So he didn't even allow himself to drop straight to the bottom. He just went straight back up into that uh, last maneuver. It's super impressive as we look at this super slow-mo here. It was really, really well done and uh, really cat-like reflexes and uh, really quick decision-making. You can see that was where he cut that bottom turn really short just to allow himself to get so late and so critical up into the lip there. Sort of drifted the fins on the way down to two quick turns in succession. I think the wave height's probably going to let him down a little bit. Just The 6.67 six, was the difference and, and kind of like the first heat with Ramsey having one major score. It's kind of coming down to one banger and been tough to find a backup in these first two heats of the day. But it has been goofy foot dominance.